Good morning. Welcome to Warner Temple AME Zion Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm honored that you've come to pull up, park, and praise him. We're glad that you're here today. And I want to just share a couple of announcements, and I'll do a prayer. Following the prayer, we'll have Celeste and the girls to lead us in the selections, and I'll share the scripture and the message for you this morning. I want to remind you to continue to wear your mask. Continue to wear your mask. I have one today, and it's a love connection, a terrorist connection, okay? Um, and what I want to remind you is that you've got to do the three W's. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and wait. Make sure that you're socially distancing yourself. Uh, still, the coronavirus is going strong, and we need to make sure that we protect ourselves as well as those who we love and others. Also, I want to remind you to complete your census, the 2020 census. The number for that is 844-330-2020. It only takes about five minutes. August 8th, 9th, and 10th will be census weekend. So we're going to encourage you to make sure you fill out your census because that means money comes back into our neighborhood, comes back into our schools and helps with our streets. Make sure that you do that because that's 10 years of funds that we're losing if you don't do it. Also, we have on the table in the back, we will have information about filling out your absentee ballot form. Your state absentee ballot form. They will be available on the table along with census information if you want to fill those out. Please do that. And then we received a thank you note from Mrs. Hamilton. Um, Mrs. Um, Esther Hamilton. And the thank you note. The thank you note reads this way. And she wrote us a nice thank you note. She says, Dear Pastor and Warner Temple Church family, thank you for all of the love expressed to me and my family during this time of most difficulty in the loss of my brother David. Your prayers, cards, phone calls, monetary gifts, and words of encouragement uplifted my heart and helped me to press on, believing by faith that God was in control and would see me and my family through this time of bereavement. To God be the glory for the great things he has done for me through you. The Lord is good a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. So we'll continue to pray for Mrs. Hamilton and continue to pray for all of those who may be sick and in trouble. Let's pray now. Eternal Father, we thank you now for this day that you have made. It's a beautiful day. It's an awesome day. Now we pray, God, that you will use us for your glory. Calm us down enough to hear from you and to listen to you and that when we leave in our cars and we're going back to our separate homes, we might live, leave and live to do better lives, live better lives for you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Great is the Lord, my conqueror. He has never failed me. Trials, tribulations, he will deliver the greatest one. He's got. Great is the Lord, my conqueror. He has never failed me yet. Through all my trials, tribulations, he will deliver the greatest Great is the Lord, my conqueror. He has never failed me yet. Through all my trials, tribulations, he will deliver the greatest one. He's God. Great is the Lord, my conqueror. He has never Trials, tribulations, he will deliver the greatest one. He's got great is the Lord. 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 All right, take it all the way up. Great is the Lord. Great. Great is the Lord, my conqueror, he 
never fail me yet. Through all my trials, tribulations, he will deliver the greatest one. He's God. Amen. 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 We thank Celeste, Zariah, and India for blessing us with great is the Lord. He is our conqueror, and he has never failed us yet. Let me remind you that after this service at 1015, those who may not be able to look at us or listen to us on Facebook or YouTube, you're able to call the conference call line, and you'll hear this message delivered at 1015. And then at 1115, we have our, Bible, our Sunday school, and you're invited to our Sunday school hour. Um, there's a Zoom call a number that you'll place on the screen, and you're welcome to be a part of our Sunday school hour as well. I want to share with you today from a familiar passage of Scripture for many of us. It's the 139th Psalm. It's a psalm, they call it a musician's psalm, or the chief musician's psalm. And this is a psalm that talks about God's perfect knowledge of man. God's perfect knowledge of man. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 6. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. And we find these words. O Lord, you've searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. I want to share with you from the subject entitled, I'm here, God. I'm here, God, but now what? I'm here, God, now what? Eternal Father, would you move, clip it out of the way, and let the picture come, so that God, when we leave this place, we might go home and live better lives. Would you speak now, my Father, for thy servant hears, and he will obey. Amen. I'm here, God. Now what? None of us ask to be here. None of us ask to be born. None of us ask to arrive and to be present at this present time with all of the things that are going on around us. None of us tapped our mom or dad and said, hey, mom, dad, let me be born this day. Let me be born around this time. None of us, none of us bargained to be here at this time. And yet what we understand is that I've been troubled all week, the last six, 10 days, because on July 16th, Cynthia Burton was um, walking her dog, Flounder. She normally walks her dog a number of times throughout the day, but she was walking her dog on that Thursday evening. And as she was walking her dog, she decided to go home a different way. Unbeknownst to her, seven hours prior, a young 21-year-old, gave birth to a baby boy in the toilet. She left him in the toilet for approximately seven hours. She would come home and find him in the toilet and she knew he was alive because he kept crying. She then takes the baby boy out of the toilet, gets a black trash bag, and places the baby boy in the trash can, trash bag, ties up the bag very tightly, puts the bag in the trunk of her car, drives around to a store, does some shopping, picks up some milk and a couple other things. And then she takes the trash bag, 
with the little boy still crying in it, tied tightly, and she throws it into a trash can behind the Christ Community Church. Statistics said that the baby stayed in the trash can and in the trash bag for at least an hour tied tightly. And then comes Miss Bird, founder, going home a different way, and they come by the trash can, and they hear, she says, she hears a sound of a baby crying. She gets closer to the trash can, and she says the closer she gets to the trash can, the louder the sound comes out. She opens the trash can, pulls out the bag, and realizes that there's a baby in the bag. The bag is so tightly tied, she says, that I couldn't untie it. I had to rip the bag. And when I ripped the bag open, there was a little baby boy crying. And she says that when I opened the bag, he stopped crying. And I pulled him out and I called to the church for help, but nobody was there. I went to the neighborhood and I cried out for help. And some people that were on the patio came down and they assisted me. And I took the baby, she says, put him in my arms, untook the umbilical cord from around his neck. And I started singing, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. And she started whispering to the little boy. And she said, God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. You are going to do great things. And she said to her amazement, the little baby reached up and grabbed her pinky finger and just clasped it. Wow. You see, I want you to understand that there are two special days in the lives of an individual. The day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. <clears throat> And for us as Christians, we believe that the sovereign God knows all about us. We believe that God knows my uprising and my sitting down. God knows the very words that come out of my mouth. God knows me even in my mother's womb before I was brought forth. God knew me. As believers, we believe in the greatness of God and that God is always with us. And God's hand is always moving about us and always moving to our good, to our advantage, to make things better for us. We believe as followers of Jesus Christ that we serve an all-knowing God. Omniscient, omnipresent, all-knowing. We believe that God knows everything. And he also knows everything about me. We believe that God is everywhere. And he's also everywhere with me. We believe that God is the creator of everything. And we should believe that he created us. And so, as we think about this, we know that he knows where we are. And so I raise the question, I am here. God, now what? I'm here. I'm not an accident. I'm not a missed period. I'm here. I'm not a missed cycle. I'm here. Not an oops. I'm here. Not a mistake by the lake. I'm here. I'm here. Mm. Some perhaps believe that things happen because of luck. You know, like Cliff and I were riding today and we were talking about how, how blessed we've been and that it hasn't rained any Sunday morning since we've been here coming. And then Clifford did this thing. He reached up and he knocked 
like he was knocking on wood, like that's going to help. <laughs> you see, we don't believe in luck. We don't believe in lucky charms or, or karma. We, we don't believe in four-leaf clovers. We don't believe in lucky horseshoes or lucky rabbit's foot. As I've said to you before, if the rabbit's foot was so lucky, the rabbit would still have it on. To be here, I'm, 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 I'm here, God. Now what? Well, the psalmist says in 139 verse 5 that the Lord places a hedge around us. A hedge. A hedge is, it's a barrier. It's a protective device. It's a protective barrier. The, the hedge protects you from things coming in and things going out. God has placed a hedge around us. And the good news for believers is that, note this, nothing comes to us without first passing through God's permission. Nothing. No thing, no trial, no tribulation, no turbulence, no coronavirus, no pandemic, no Florence, no Floyd, no Hannah, no anything, no test, no trials. Hey, mm. nothing comes to us without first receiving the permission from God. And so, lack of a job doesn't surprise God. Income doesn't surprise God. Circumstances doesn't surprise God. Life situations doesn't surprise God. Mm. Burdens don't catch God off guard. Death doesn't surprise God. Health doesn't surprise God. Cancer doesn't surprise God. Diabetes doesn't catch God off guard. Nothing comes to us without first going through God, being permitted by God. So I'm here, God. 2020, all the trials and tribulations that have faced us in this year of plenty, expecting plenty in 2020. I'm here, God. Now what? Remember the two times that are important in a person's life? When you were born and the day you discover why you were born. I want to ask you the question, how do you find your purpose? How do you find why I was born? How do you answer that question? How, how do we answer, God, why would you place me here? Why would you place me with these parents? Why would you place me during this time of life? Why, God, would you place me here with all this pressure and all this going on? A young man by the name of Mark Manson wrote an article entitled, Seven Strange Questions that help you find your life's purpose. Seven strange questions that help you find your life's purpose. I wanna just share a few of those questions. One of them he says is, what would you do and forget about eating or using the bathroom? See, to define your purpose, it's, it's something that you would do and it would make you forget about eating or using the bathroom. You remember? Remember when I was a kid, I remember when they'd go outside and we'd play. And we would play all day long. We would play until it got dark. And sometimes people would say, man, it's too dark to play baseball. And say, no, it's not. No, it's not. We can still play. And then somebody gets hit in the eye with the ball. Then we say, okay, too dark. Let's go home. But we'd play all day long. And then when, when we'd finish playing, we'd run in the house, almost tearing the door down to use the bathroom. And then I'm ready to eat got a question for you. As we defined our purpose, what would you do that would keep you so busy that you would forget about eating and using the bathroom? Another question he would raise is, what would you be ashamed to tell your old eight-year-old self? 
What, what would you be ashamed of your doing now that you would tell your eight-year-old self? Because you remember at eight, and what I love about children, you could say, hey, draw me a picture, and they just start drawing. You can say to a child, sing, and they just start singing. Why? Because they believe they can sing. They believe they can dance. They believe they can draw. They believe they can do the stuff they can think about. Think about it. All the things that we thought we were able to do at eight, right, and, and be a poet. But then here's the question I got to ask you. Who told you you could not? Mm. Who told you you were not good enough? Who told you, Karen, Kathy, you didn't have the ability? Who told you you didn't have the talent or the skill? Who told you you didn't have enough going for? Who told you you weren't good enough? Mm. Who? Put you in a trash bag and signed you up and said you weren't good enough. Who put you in a bag and said you're not smart enough? Who put you in the bag? Stop looking at what Facebook says. Stop watching what folks put on Instagram and all that. They take 40 takes to send you one shot. Stop looking at make-believe. Who put you in a trash bag and said you were not good enough? You were not smart enough. You were not wise enough. And they sort of dumped you in the trash can and put the lead on it. Can I just remind you, listen, stop listening to critics. You see, Jesus didn't argue with critics. He didn't argue with folks who didn't agree with him. He didn't argue with folks who were critics. You know, see, critics are spectators. They're not players. Critics are those who aren't happy with themselves. Critics are those who hurt people because hurting people hurt people. Critics are mad at the world. And can I just tell you, listen, stop trying to live up to the critics' expectations. You will never do that. Mm. And so, I got to be honest with you. When you look for your purpose, when you find your purpose, I'll be honest, you will. Chances are, chances are real good that you will fail. Chances are you will make mistakes. Chances are you'll do some stuff and you'll probably totally embarrass yourself. But, but here's my prayer. Here's, here's, here's my prayer. My prayer is God. Help me to do the best I know how. Here's my prayer. God, get me out of the trash can because I'm, I'm screaming for my life. I'm crying for my life. I'm yelling out for my life. God, help me to know how will I change the world for your sake. Mm. How will I impact the world for my sake? How, how will I get people out of the trash can and, and get them free from the trash bag? How will I impact the world for you, God? How will I make a difference where I am? How will I live so that those who know me but don't know him would want to know him because they ran into me? God, help me to go by the trash cans of life and hear those who have been thrown away.
Help me to hear their cries. Help me to hear their cry for life. Help me to hear them as they say, I'm here, God. But now what? Mm. I'm here. But now what? God, help me to hear the cries of children that have been put in trash bags who don't have a pep in their step. Children who don't have a gleam in their eyes. Children who when you speak to them, they keep their heads bowed. Children who don't have a view of this life. Children who are so caught up with the number of likes and dislikes and how many people viewed my stuff on Facebook and not realizing that the psalmist says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. God, help me. Help me to reach out to those who have been placed in trash bags. I got a call this week from Linda Thompson, who is now the diversity person for the county as well as for the city. She works for the police department as well. And she called and she said, um, Cliff, I'm trying to get some pastors together because we know that the kids aren't going to be able to go to school for at least nine weeks, it looks like now. And she said, would, would Warren and Temple be, be willing to open its doors so that kids from parents who have to go to work might have a place to, to study and do homework and all? And without even second, a second chance or second thought, I said, of course. I said, we have to. Mm. Why, why do you have to? Well, because there are children who've been placed in a trash bag. The odds might be against them. They're children whose hope may be dashed because nobody opens the door and allows them to get used to internet or all those things. And so I said, yes, we've got to, even though we're going to use social distances, even though we're going to be as careful as God will allow us to be. But yes, we've got to. How come? Because they're here. And now what? They're here. And God says, I've got a plan for them. I've got a purpose for them. I've got a great thing in store for them. Lastly, I would raise the question to you. If you knew that you had only one year to live, how would you live it? If you knew you had only one year to live, how would you go buy trash cans? Would you go by or would you go by listening for cries? How would you live? Would you worry about what kind of car you drive? Or would you be more concerned about what's driving people? Hmm. How would you live if if for some reason you found out that, that you've got just one year from today, how would you use it? What would you want people to say when they walk by your casket? What would you want them to say in your final hours? Well, I'd want them to say, preacher, you try to get kids out of trash cans. I'd want to hear them say, preacher, you try to get adults untied and fixed out of their trash can. You tried to lift them up for the kingdom of God. Mm. I'd want them to say, preacher, you tried to live so that people might know eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered the hearts of men. The joy that awaits those who love him. I'm here. God. Now what? Can I be honest with you? 
There are people around us who feel like that little boy in the trash can. There are folks that we know who are struggling. I, I pray so hard for the mother of the little boy who felt that life was not worth living and she would rather place him in a trash bag, tie him up. Whew. And then throw him in the trash can. But thanks be to God that he sends us home a different way. And here's my challenge, Warner. Hear the cry. Get him out of the trash can. Open the trash bag and set people free. Because God has a purpose and a plan for everyone he allows to take a breath. Can you give God some praise? <clears throat> if by chance you're struggling, if by chance you may be somebody who feels like I'm in the trash bag, preacher. Mm. All my life I've been fighting to, to get out of the trash bag. All my life people have said to me, I'm not gonna mount to anything. You're gonna end up in a trash can inside of a trash bag. I've, all my life I've been fighting to get out of a trash bag. Can I tell you Jesus came to rescue you? He came, the Bible says, to reach down, way down, way down, to lift us up, reach way into the deepest trash can. As a matter of fact, the, the, the lady said, Ms. Burton said that the trash bag was all the way at the bottom of the trash can. And can I just tell you, God can send somebody by wherever you are and remind you that he loves you. So I want to challenge you, if you want to call the church, if you want to give your life to the Lord, the number's on the screen. Please feel free to do that. If you're struggling with issues and you feel like you're in the trash bag or you want to put somebody else in the trash bag, call us. We want to help you. If you want to give to the church, we invite you to give by way of Give Lafay. Um, or you can give by those who are here to my left, my right, as well as you can give by putting it in the box over there by the church. But most importantly, if you would, would you share this message? Share it with those who you know. Share it on your Facebook page that maybe somebody might hear this message and get out of the trash bag. Our songsters will sing, and then after they sing, I will close with a closing prayer and the benediction. You are my strength, strength like no Fullness of your grace.
Amen, 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 amen. Just before we closing prayer, um, Roger Norfleet, come here, Roger. Roger is, and his family will be leaving, going to Georgia. Um, they got a new job, and they're taking all the kids and the wife, and we're just so honored that they've come. Come stand right here in front of me. Stand in front of me. Stand there. Yeah. And so... Before you start tooting your horns, they, they say that we're glad he's leaving. I mean, you toot your horns to say we thank God for him and his family. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for seasons in our lives. Seasons where people come in, and some writer said sometimes they'll come in, they'll walk all over your heart, then they'll leave. But see that they come and they go. We pray for Roger the man of his household. We pray for his family. We ask you, God, to continue to provide angels to watch over them, continue to remind them that God has a purpose for their lives. Bless their children. May they continue to grow and do great things. Bless Teresa, God. May you continue to hold her in the palm of your hands. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. And now, God, we ask that you will bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Those who are listening, those who may be calling in even right now, I pray, God, that you will continue to move in our lives because the God moves in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. He'll plant his footsteps out over the sea, and he rides out every storm. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shout out to Roger and his family. There you go. There you go. All right. Also, just one last announcement. My son Walter proposed to a young lady on yesterday. So... One down. Her name is Nook. Her name is Nook, and we love her, and we're excited about that. God is such an awesome God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. All right. They're going to dismiss you. God bless you. Thank you for coming.